Hello, I'm Dominic Walker, JMW's Inside Man. My guest is Simon Block. Simon is a partner within JMW's employment law team. So, Simon, uh, we can't help but have noticed recently that P&O ferries find themselves in the middle of a PR disaster, and there are lots of employees clearly upset at losing their job. Can you just explain what's happened and why has there been so much discourse uh, to P&O Ferry's decision? Yeah, thanks, Dominic. So nobody can have read the press last week without seeing splashed all over the front pages that P&O decided to um, terminate the employment of 800 workers um, in one fell swoop. They did this via a three-minute pre-recorded video call um, which set out that employees were being dismissed on the grounds of redundancy um, and that that day would be their final day of employment. p and cited losses of £100 million year on year um, and in order to secure the viability of the business um, and to protect the jobs of um, over 2,000 other employees, um, they had to make these redundancies. So there's been quite a lot of controversy over the decision because absolutely no process was followed and that the way that the terminations were handled um, has um, invoked serious amounts of criticism. Um, from an employment law perspective, the requirements for handling collective redundancies haven't been followed. Um, where you are making more than 20 people redundant, um, you have to have a consultation period of at least 30 days. And where you are making more than 100 people redundant, that period increases for a minimum um, of 45 days. So that process doesn't appear to have been followed at all. So as a result of this, it seems p and are trying to limit their lo losses by offering significant enhanced redundancy packages. Um, but you're not bound, employees are not bound to accept those redundancy packages if they don't want to. Um, they will be significantly enhanced. But if they don't want to accept those packages, they can pursue claims in relation to unfair dismissal. Um, claims can also be brought by the unions or um, employee representative groups um, in respect of the failure to consult, of which the penalties are significant. The penalty for failure uh, to properly inform and consult under the, under the legislation is up to 90 days pay which is 13 weeks pay for each affected employee. So it sounds like P&O have decided to outsource their staff to a third party agency. Has P&O done anything wrong? I think this has raised a debate as to whether or not they've done anything wrong in outsourcing this type of service um, and whether this amounts to a practice of firing and rehiring um, and engaging the labour in this way. Um, currently, it's not actually against the law to dismiss and re-engage staff with cheaper labour, but when you go down that route, you must follow strict consultation processes. Um, there has been some reports in the press about this firing and rehiring um, in practice within other businesses, um, and it, it's equally attracted some criticism. But um, is it illegal? No, it is not. I think the bigger problem for P&O here lies in the, um, the way that they've actually handled the redundancies and the re-engagement of the staff by using cheaper labour. That's what it all comes down to. And I think they've potentially mishandled and misjudged how the public would react to, um, to, to, to this because they still need to have um, some of these services provided um, and they're trying it appears that they're trying to do that by using a cheaper labor um, option. So what do you think is likely to happen next and how could you help in a similar situation? I think that the whole process does serve as a huge warning to businesses that when you are faced with um, having to engage with redundancies and perhaps not even on the scale of what p and have faced You've got to be extremely careful in terms of how this is handled um, because stories will be picked up even not necessarily by the global press, but um, a national press, but even the local press where you're laying off workers and not following any, 
any process at all. Um, if the staff don't take the packages on offer, then we're certainly likely to see unfair dismissal claims that are brought. Um, and also, as I've said, claims by the unions. Simon, thank you so much for your insight. And if you'd like to speak to Simon uh, and the employment team here at JMW, you can email insideman at jmw.co.uk or call 0161 82 81 999. I'm Dominic Walker, JMW's Inside Man.